think I've been always thinking about history because both my parents are historians and study ancient things. And so I had been going to the archive with my dad since I was like four and he always had these games with cataloging that we used to do uh, in the collections. We used to uh, live in all these colonial towns and sort of moved from one archive to the other. And we used to collect different ephemera from life, but in the process of cataloging and preserving it, you know, so much information was made up. And so I think that those questions about how collections get made, I've been thinking a lot for a long time. I think cataloging is very similar to the process of art making period. It's just how to define material in the world and depends on the methodology. You know, if it's going into a history category, then it's cataloged in a very specific way that might be different from like if it was in a science type of cataloging or in an art cataloging. And so it's just interesting to see how the same material can be so many different things depending on how it's framed. Hi, my name is Gala Porus Kim and I'm an artist living in LA. Currently my work is about figuring out and thinking through how material lives in collections and how it gets cataloged and conserved from where the objects are found until the current location. I moved to LA when I was 12 because my mom was doing her PhD at UCLA. And so I lived in Colombia until I was 11 and then in Spain for a year and then here so I've been in LA for a long time. I think the way that I decided to become an artist was because so many of my interests are very academic and research oriented, but I hate writing. And so I think that my artwork is kind of similar style research as if you were writing some publication, but it ends up taking shape in like shapes instead of a book. I think academic fields have become a lot more flexible in the way that you know the historical method is used people are having to like account for where those structures come from and who is not benefiting from it you know the history of institutions just come from a very specific place most of my work is large-scale drawing why i like drawing over other mediums is because it slows down time so much I have a very, very short attention span, but I want to know about these objects. So I really think that many of those drawings are actually for myself to get to know those objects really intimately. And so when I started actually delegating some of the work, I'm like, oh, well, I don't know some of them as well as I could, but maybe it's just about learning periods. And I think that my work is not necessarily like attached to my aesthetic production at all. Like it's not my specific mark is different than somebody else's mark. When I started hiring people to help me, I on purpose hired people who didn't make drawings at all. And so in a way it was like anybody can actually literally make those things. It's just lots of time and patience. It's difficult to anticipate where works will come from because they're all so different. And so I think that it makes me anxious because I can't anticipate how to make a new one. And so I've always tried to work with an institution or collaborating with someone in a way to just talk through their ideas. And I think it's more not making work but finding something that's already there. There are these fabric fragments that were dredged from the cenote at Chichen Itza that ended up at the Peabody Collection. And so they originally were meant as votive offerings for Chak, the Mayan rain god, and supposed to be probably in perpetuity at the bottom of this cenote. They had actually been well preserved because they were submerged in water. And so like the major part of the project was to think through what are the legal loopholes that were made for that material to get from Mexico to the U.S. into the museum? And also in conservation, what happens when they get taken out of the pit that was preserving them into the current location that is the driest spot ever, probably. And so in the documents, they were actually saying like, oh, as soon as we take them out of the water, they start falling apart. They were carbonized, and so they were talking about how uh, this type of glue was 
squirt it onto it to just keep all of these carbon particles together in the shape of a fabric. So it's like, what makes an object when it's just object shape but is not the object anymore? And so I think that that was such an interesting example to think about the field of conservation actually making the idea of a work that's not even there anymore. I think that lately many of the materials that I've been using is just through the anxiety of other people. It's like talking through conservators, they're all like moisture and dust and mold, like keep it out. And so then I'm thinking like, okay, like why, you know? And so I thinking through existing worries of other people, it's not that I on purpose was like thinking I'm going to make works with dust. And I think that it was just in conversation with people who were worried about dust and all of a sudden he was thinking like what is it made out of or just the properties of it or why are we trying to keep it up which kind of just led to like what is the smallest fragment of something you know like what constitutes like a whole object because you know at the same time thinking through those fabrics like if they don't even exist and they're made out of these particles then like what is the difference between one particle and like million particles no? So much of what makes an object is not even in the material itself. I think that now so much of the content of my own work is not necessarily on the front face. So much of the work is actually in the conversations that I have in the layup to that finished thing. When I think about many of the drawings, they kind of feel like receipts, like something has already happened in the conversations of making this idea and here's just sort of the end. And I think that it's difficult to anticipate how much information you can leave, uh, especially when the works are immaterial. How do you conserve an immaterial work? And I think that because conceptual works are mostly installed in someone's mind is to figure out how oral traditions get conserved or preserved versus like, solid objects that might contain that idea. And I think in the future with conservation, it's more like so many works are not necessarily about the physical conservation of something. Many, majority of things are like, yes, the, the value is in its material property, but sometimes the main thing might be not attached to the solid shape itself, no? My experience as a visitor of the museum has changed so much after thinking through how the museum actually works. You know, I love history and going to the museums. It was just like such a magical experience and there's no way to actually see many of those objects on site or however you think it could exist in ancient past and so the process of finding out that those things were just fabricated definitely left a big imprint because then you can see like the influence of the donors or the board or heavy conservation or heavy public engagement and every institution has such different personalities. Even in LA when you see like MoCA, LACMA, Hammer, Getty, Jurassic Technology, such different personalities. Each one has such a different way of like prioritizing what they all are doing. Thinking about the responsibility then of institutions to be transparent with an audience, to like have a big disclaimer of the unknowable, because on the front of the house it looks like everything is like so professionalized and resolved because it's very scientific sounding when it's literally impossible to care for something indefinitely. a building. That's also one of the main questions that it's like what each object in the collection makes the building become then. Because in the front of the house you see historical objects and they are historical because it says here in this container we show historical objects. But in the same way like you know having all of these things also changes the container too. It's like cemetery, it's like kitchen, it's like an ancient crate and barrel. It's about organization of things, you know. If it's all of the things at the same time, which one do we say is most important?